Well, most of these breweries had opened up in the uh, Northwest, you know, uh, Seattle, Oregon, Northern California. And these brewers were all blessed with being in a market where demand way outstripped supply. We opened in Texas. We were not troubled with this excess demand issue. So uh, we actually had to work on trying to sell our beer. Um, the, uh, uh, <coughs> but we determined early on that advertising just wasn't in our budget. You, know, you, you look at how much it costs to run an ad. Uh, you know, when Anheuser-Busch runs an ad for Bud, they figure that, you know, that you know, of the drinking adults out there, pretty much all of them are potentially you know, Bud Light fans, unfortunately. Um, you know how you make light beer, by the way? Take a regular beer and add water. I'm not kidding. That's how they make it. But they, so, they sell it for the same price. It's, and then because it's, it has less alcohol, people drink more of it. It's a wonderful business model. Um, <laughs> offer to Bud Light and a glass of water. I drink the water, though. You only have one liver to waste it on bad beer. Uh, by the way, beer is good for your heart. You know, more and more research does show that you know, a couple beers a day, you'll live longer. Six beers a day is not three times as healthy, so <laughs> don't, don't go that way. Um, but anyway, we, you know, we figured that our market was much smaller, but we still had to sit, pay the same price to get that ad. And I mean, you, you do the math, and you realize that there is absolutely no way that we could get a return on, on any kind of advertising. Um, in about year four of our business, I did get talked into run, doing a, uh, an, a radio ad. And if you want to see it, you can go to our website uh, and listen to it. Just think of the movie, So I Married an Axe Murderer. <laughs> think of the beat poet. And, and uh, that's what our ad was. Uh, <clears throat> I have told many media reps since that day that it would have been probably just as effective and much more entertaining and probably would have been a PR event, too, if we had just piled $50,001 bills and thrown a match into it. <laughs> uh, really, our most effective marketing tool is our brewery. And I think that's something that a lot of companies fail to realize, is people actually like to go see where things are made, how things are done, especially when it's beer. But uh, I think more and more people, if you invite people into your facility, uh, the power of that is incredible. They see it, they touch it, they meet you. There's no way that you can express your corporate culture to them like having them actually there and meeting the, you know, your other coworkers because um, really companies are just a bunch of people. Um, yeah, the, the catchphrase there is experiential marketing. I, I avoid any business school-like phrase like the plague, but uh, I thought I, if I said it, maybe I would sound smarter this morning. <laughs> Um, the, uh, uh, when we started, opened up, we decided we were going to give tours. And our first tour was the first weekend we were open. On our very first tour, we had 10 people come out. Second tour, we had three people come out. The third tour, a bus pulled up. You know, over the years, our tours have grown. We were hoping that eventually we would get up to maybe 50 people on a tour, that we thought that would be just crazy. Uh, 100 was just our wildest dream. Today, we charge $5 a person, and we average about 600 people per tour. Yes, the, the, here they are, all standing up. You can see what a, a lovely pastoral site we have there. <laughs> and they go inside. And then they discover that there's 600 people, there's no air conditioning, and there's two bathrooms. <laughs> what, what our tours have become is it's very reminiscent of a German beer hall. Uh, it, it's a community gathering spot. People bring families out. They bring big picnic lunches. Uh, it's really become this event. And it's great to have this weekly event. And when I'm giving the tour, I ask people, you know, how many of you are here for the first time? And every week, more than 50% of the crowd raise their hand. Um, by the way, this, this tour this Saturday is our last tour at the old spot. So we haven't announced that publicly because we really don't want more people coming out because we don't know what to do with them. Um, our, 
Next most effective marketing tool is PR. Uh, I affectionately refer to myself as a PR slut, and I'm proud of this term. And if somebody is PR sluttier than I am, I really admire them. Uh, you know, we can't afford advertising, and with a brand like ours, a craft beer, I almost question if, if advertising really would effectively build the brand or, or possibly put a negative uh, spin to it. Because people with a, with a brand like ours, our customers don't really like to be advertised to, even though you know, there's no question it still works in many different ways on people. Um, but they like to feel like they discovered our brand, that they own it. And with advertising, I think that that could have a, a negative uh, kind of halo effect on our brand. Um, you know, how much is, is, you know, when we do get a, a news article or a piece on the TV news, you know, how, how much is that worth? How do I value it? You know, and, and I know that there's been a lot of probably college business school studies and analysis of how much it's worth, but you know, I'll tell you how I look at it. You know, a big ad in you know, the Houston Chronicle costs, you know, they claim $50,000 for a full page ad, but good luck getting that today. So let's say it, it's about $10,000 to run a, a big ad. Um, you know, getting an ad on the nightly news on TV is probably at least that much. In addition, you've got all the production costs to, to put that together. Uh, to get any kind of impact with an ad, you can't just run it once. You've got to run it several times, so multiply that a few times. Um, you know, people are skeptical of ads also, uh, whereas when you get something in the news, people you know, believe that to be the God's honest truth. Of course, you know, when you read yourself misquoted, you <laughs> start to wonder sometimes if they should be taking that quite so uh, to heart so quickly. But when they read something in the newspaper, they see it on TV, one impression, and it's amazing how people retain that. Um, they believe it, and you know, it didn't cost you anything other than what I have to pay Dan every month. Um, and so the bottom line is I look at that big ad, or I mean the, the, the big piece in, in the newspaper, or on TV as worth somewhere between fifty to hundred thousand dollars, and yeah, you know, that's an amount of money that we could never afford to actually pay. But you know, the power of it is, is amazing. You know, the uh, I also think that something that's very important with PR is the consistency. You have to constantly be out there working it. It's not something that you can just kind of do for a couple months and let it go. Uh, yeah, you know, I can't tell you the number of times that. We'll put together a press release, send it out there, maybe even really target a couple of reporters and nothing. Then about two months later, they call up and say, I just came up on a great idea for a story. I'm going to do a story on St. Arnold. Don't you think that's great? And we go, yeah, great idea. Wish we thought of that. Um, you're so clever. Uh, but also consistent PR, I think, creates the image of legitimacy. Um, you know, it, the more people hear about you, obviously that means that you're a bigger deal. Also, the, that same effect uh, you know, uh, affects reporters. The more that they hear about you, the more that they want to report on you. Uh, then comes the even better part, which is then you become the industry expert. And that means that any time they write on, on your uh, industry, they call you. My favorite part is when any time they start to write on a competitor, they call you. Talk about competitive advantage. <laughs> when you get to spin the story on your competitor, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, they're great people most of the time. Um, anyway, if you can't tell uh, already, I'm a big fan of PR.